Okay, this is like the fifth take of taking this video, so forgive me if I seem a little frazzled. It's BD. Today we are talking about clamping and what's happening when we clamp and why it's not that great compared to pumping for like long-term changes in size. So, but before I get into it, my book is in the description, BD's Big Book of Length. I cover everything I learned in the past six to eight months about therapeutic penis enlargement is what I'm deeming it, where I look at the science of soft tissue reformation, particularly in tendons and ligaments, because that's what I'm most comfortable with. I take the science from that, apply it to elongation of the penis, so that way we can get our gains faster, safer, and best of all, with less time. So, if you've been struggling with what I've been talking about, like keeping up, um, making sure everything's up to date, with my theories, my book is what you want. Everything I post is covered in that book. It's just streamlined so it's easier to follow. On top of that, it has routines and it has pictures and diagrams coming this week. So if you are interested, it is in the description below. So we are talking about clamping. What brought this up was this post. What happened to clamping? And essentially, <sighs> this guy has not really been paying attention, which is fine. You can jump in and out at any time. But he believes that we stopped talking about clamping, but it's something that he thought was so great. And we didn't really stop talking about clamping. It's just we think something else is better. First of all, back in 2018, when a joke for you was started, the creator was a huge proponent of clamping while he did not like pumping. Since he could not see past his own bias and basically said no one really gains from pumping because he didn't gain from pumping, <laughs> okay, that it does not work. Then I started r slash getting bigger. I'm like, hey, both works, but I think pumping is a little bit better for X, Y, and Z reasons. And then my business partner... Hank, who I need to do business things for right after this because I forgot, um, had an issue with clamping as soon as he tried it. And he's like, I don't think we should be recommending this just because of the safety factor. So that's the gist. I still think pumping has, not pumping, I still think clamping has its place, but I think it's very overrated at this point. Okay, back to this mug. Okay. So, in that post I just showed you, I got into a bit of a tiff with someone about the multiple case studies of pre-prism and how that should be the baseline of penis enlargement. It's not a good <laughs> metric, alright? So, what pre-prism is, is an extended erection lasting longer than four hours. Individuals with blood-holding disease or blood diseases such as sickle cell anemia that cause a lot of clotting can eventually have a clot in their penis. This clot causes a prolonged erection and it happens quite frequently. So they can have four hours of pre-prism, sometimes days worth of pre-prism. Just imagine having a throbbing painful erection for three days at a time. Don't sign me up for it. But essentially, since it's under mild high pressure for an extended period of time, the tunica begins to degrade. For those who don't know what the tunica is, you should check out my other videos because I explained it a little bit better. But it is the connective sheath, the connective tissue sheath that surrounds the corpus cavernosum. In the shape of that, we can change the shape of our shaft. Endothelial tissue is what causes your penis to get uh, filled with blood. So if we can increase the density of our endothelial tissue, the thicker our penis is or the thicker our erections are, like how firm they are. So since we have a mild strain constantly, we can break down the tunica. And since we have high pressure for like hours at a time, we cause rapid adaptations to the angiogenic, or angiogenic, the endothelial tissue, the blood holding tissue. So you can see relatively quick size changes with preaprism, but again, these size changes are not going to be natural because it is not a natural event that's happening. It is not controlled growth. It is literally 
basically a healing response from severe trauma. So if we are trying to mimic said trauma, we are probably not going to have the greatest of time long term. <clears throat> so I'm not saying that we can't learn from the pre prism event, we just have to break it down further. So with clamping, if we're trying to mimic pre prism, we're going to need to wear a cable clamp if you're one of the old heads that thinks plastic is better than rubber for some reason. <laughs> Sorry, a little bit of snark there. But I use soft uh, silicone rings because they fit my penis better. And that way I can stack them and also like modulate how much pressure I have. This will conform to the shape of your dick. Meanwhile, if you're using a hard plastic clamp, your penis has to conform to the shape of the clamp. And if your penis just doesn't make sense to like go to an oval shape like mine because it's more boxy at the base, you're never going to get good occlusion. It's never going to work. That's why I sell rings and not cable clamps. I could sell a cable clamp for a lot more at Peak Mouth Physique rather than these rings, but I digress. I just don't think it makes sense long term. Okay, back to clamping. What we're doing is we are occluding blood flow out of the penis, which creates a pressure imbalance. This pressure imbalance is probably about uh, 10 to 20 percent, depending on your own um, how strong your heart is, essentially and how big the occlusion is. Additionally, whatever's being compressed by the rings will be pushed into the shaft. So if we're saying 20% of increased internal pressure just from the occlusion and then 5% more from the compression, if the average erection pressure is about 5 Hg, inches of mercury, uh, the pencil on research you're going off of is anywhere from 4 to 7. I think it's closer to 4 just because of how poor people's health is in general anymore. But we'll say 5 just for simplicity. 25% more pressure would be 1 and a quarter inches of mercury. So we're just above 6 inches of mercury of internal pressure in the penis. I know no, using... We're going to stick to HG just to make it simpler for you guys. So 6 HG. So... If you look at our pumping recommendations, it is anywhere from 5 to 10 Hg. A lot of individuals are not going to see changes at as low as 6 Hg. And remember, this is just one individual. If someone's erection quality is very poor to begin with, we're saying like 3.5 to 4 Hg inside the penis, they only get a 25% increase, they are barely above 5 Hg. So they're not gonna be seeing much change in strain on the tunica albuginia therefore we won't be seeing much tunica reformation on top of that since it's a mild um higher pressure event we're not going to see much stimulus from the stint from the high pressure in the corpus cavernosum but that does not mean clamping does not have its purpose i go off of bfr so what bfr is is blood flow restriction therapy. So you take a stent, wrap it around your arm, for example, and then as you do bicep curls, for example, you use up oxygen more and more. As that oxygen depletes, your cells start freaking out like, oh my god, we need oxygen. So it releases a bunch of stress signals, essentially saying, hey, we're dying here. And then based off of those stress signals, your body starts producing more vascular tissue to support these arms while they could go through an avascular event again. Normally, avascular events happen from like chronically using the tissue. So like you see it more in your legs. So like when you're running, you'll start getting burning sensations in your legs. That's because you're getting a lot of lactic acid buildup from anaerobic activity, anaerobic lack of oxygen. So due to that lactic acid buildup and lack of oxygen, we get the increase in vascular tissue. Since the two components of the penis that we really care about is the collagen fibroblast of the tunica albuginia and the vascular tissue of the corpus cavernosum, if we can control what causes that to grow, or both of them to grow rather, we can have basically complete control over the size and shape of our penis. So, back to BFR. 
if we use this clamp, we will be basically applying BFR therapy to our penis. Now, most BFR research, and this is what I've been going off of, says you do not want to be in a hypoxic state for more than 10 to 15 minutes at a time. So that's what I've been doing. Additionally, you probably want to space it out enough so that way the endothelial tissue is not severely compromised from lack of oxygen because it is damaged due to that kind of stress. So we need to add more time between uh, clamping sessions than compared to pumping sessions. <coughs> okay, let me think for a second and get some water. So, so clamping does have its uses, but it's not going to be as effective as pumping for tunica reformation if that's what's going to be the determining factor for size. You're much better off focusing on tunica reformation than we are increasing endothelial density. Now, that doesn't mean you can't change the size of the tunica with clamping. You just need to be very smart about it. So... I, this is probably the only reason why the individual that started a jump for you was successful with it is because he did five minute sets and those five minute sets increase the chances of collagen failure because any time we load the collagen with strain since we are basically saying strain in this case is pressure exerted outwards against the collagen causing it to stretch every time he loaded the collagen with pressure that stretched more and more. So if we go off of what I talked about in the interval length protocol, which means more sets means more elongation, if we front load a bunch of smaller sets of clamping, we can get more expansion that way because the collagen's slowly breaking down in the beginning, and then we can focus on the, I guess, angiogenic and the more normal expansion compared to traditional clamping. So if we want to look at this, like this is just spitballing. Let's say we do two, I mean, if we do five two minute sets, so five sets of two minutes at the beginning, we will get double the collagen fatigue compared to five sets of two minutes. At least I'm not doing the math right now. So on paper, load up a bunch of small sets at the beginning and then you do your angiogenic sets afterwards i still think pumping is going to be light years better for tunica reformation but i know a lot of you guys can't have a penis pump or you can't afford the 70 bucks to get one at peakmouthphysique.com shameless plug but it's a start so if we're talking about like a clamping only routine for girth you still be limited by how much pressure you can exert on the tunica, but we can lower the bar, essentially, to make it easier to exert pressure. So first and foremost, we need to get some tunica release going. So, BFR massage, five minutes. Um, order probably matters a little bit. So actually, let's start with bundled stretches. So bundled stretches, one minute each way. This is not a bundle, but you get it. So you twist. Wait, it's right here. Twist one, twist the other, twist this way. So three times back and forth, six minutes total. Then we want to do BFR massage, five minutes. That's the pressure point release. So go up and down the shaft, semi-erect, to put some stress. I guess it's stress relaxation. This pressure point massage is what it is. And that's going to cause the, a bit of sheer stress to the tunica to cause it to relax further. The more it relaxes, the more it can stretch. The more it can stretch, the bigger or the more strain we can apply to it more easily. So we got bundle stretches, BFR massage. Then we're going to do um, tunica shears. So make a pincer like grip. Leave a gap between you and the top of your penis, semi-erect. You go up for one second to two seconds, like that. And this is going to apply sheer stress to the sides of the corpus cavernos, not corpus cavernosum, the sides of the tunica albuginium, which is it fucking loves for some reason. And it's going to be much easier to expand. 
then this is the tough part we're gonna say five two minute sets of clamping people have been calling it interval clamping go for it whatever make it simple interval clamping five two minute sets of clamping the strain sets for clamping then will be two 10 minute sets afterwards so your fatigue five two minute sets strain two 10 minute sets okay do this every other day pay attention to erection quality because that's going to be your number one indicator pay attention to sensitivity because that's also going to tell you if you are applying too much pressure um yeah that would be the clampers only routine that i would recommend you really don't need a lot compared to what other individuals say you need as for rest for the individual sets at the beginning you do not need a lot of time off because you're not really getting into an in or hypoxic state it takes about five minutes for hypoxia to set in so about 30 seconds between sets then on your longer sets you're going to want at least five minutes between sets because that's when hypoxia sets in we want to clear out any of the uh bad blood if you will before we continue on with our clamping to ensure no potential fibrosis. I'm just checking how much time this video has taken. Oh, you don't want to do that, that's great. Okay. But if you can get a pump, get a pump, do the interval pumping because it's going to just be better at tunica reformation and then after once you get to like six months into your girth stuff add in uh 10 minute sets of clamping twice a week that's it i'm dead serious that's all you need because we're maximizing tunica reformation and then we are dancing um we are getting as much angiogenic activity as we need from the hypoxic BFR clamping is what I'm calling it. Okay, let me know what you think in the comments and on the Reddit post. Again, book is in the description. And same with the rings I showed in this video. I don't, I think I dropped them. <laughs> hey, they're there. They're cheap. They work tremendously well. It's what I've been using for years. I just finally sourced them for you guys in the non-aliexpress market all right i will talk to you guys soon i have about 100 orders to pack so it might be a bit though all right later